algorithm is a beast of an instrument, both in terms of what it can do for your music, but also in terms of how much fun it is to experiment with. So I thought I would get you up to speed on it, while also maybe encouraging a few of you to take your first steps into sound design while we're at it. Algorithm's look and name might suggest that it's a type of synthesizer known as an FM synthesizer. And it is. All those classic FM sounds like shimmering bells, angry bass, and destructive Mad Max apocalyptic sounds. It does all those perfectly. But Algorithm goes far beyond a typical FM synthesizer in ways that can mean a lot for your music, which is what really matters, right? It seems though that every video that covers FM synthesis first tries to explain in massive detail how and why it works the way it does. But here's the truth on that. You don't actually need to understand the science behind FM synthesis to make music with it any more than you need to understand the science behind your microwave to reheat old pizza. So here's what you really need to know about FM synthesis to let algorithms intuitive design take over from there. The sound of FM synthesis comes from the combination of two simple waveforms. The first waveform is the one you hear and is often a pure sine wave. The second waveform you don't hear. Instead, it feeds into the first one to shape the sound in various ways from subtle to drastic. I mean, that's it. If you understand this basic idea that some waveforms will be tone generators that we can hear, and others will be fed into those to modulate the sound, then you're as much of an FM synthesis guru as you need to be. Where algorithm really comes alive is its front panel layout. There are nine sections, officially called operator slots, where we can load one of those tone generators or a tone shaper of some kind. If I click FM operator in the first slot, I've got a simple sine wave. By adding another FM operator above it, you can already hear that our sound has changed. But why is that? Well, that's because this sine wave operator above isn't a tone that we're hearing directly. In fact, you can see that its out button is turned off, meaning the sound of this operator is not going through our instrument's audio output. Instead, this tone is feeding into the sine wave below to shape and modulate its sound. And even in this most basic configuration, the musical result is a sharper tone than a pure sine wave. And while the level control on the lower module functions exactly like the volume level you'd expect, the level control on the FM operator feeding into it works more like an amount knob for how much this operator is modulating and shaping the tone of the lower sine wave. Lower the level and our sine wave sounds more pure. Turn up the level to modulate it more, and our sound moves away from the purity of the sine wave as it gets modulated more and more. Make sense? If we adjust the character of this upper modulating waveform, we can further shape our sound. For example, we could adjust the frequency of our FM operator. To understand this best, let's actually first just work with a single sine wave operator. If I hold a note and adjust the frequency, you'll hear our pitch moving up through the familiar tones of the harmonic series. Let's reset this back to one and bring our modulator back into the equation. If I do the same thing, but this time to our modulation operator's frequency, you'll hear that as the frequency of the modulation goes up, so too does the sharp quality of the sound. The other way we could shape the character of our operator is using the envelope controls to change the modulation's attack, decay, sustain, and release settings. If we shorten the decay and the sustain, you'll hear the sharpness fade away as our sound returns to the purity of a sine wave again. And if we increase both operators' release envelopes, we end up with a classic FM patch used to make bell-like sounds. In fact, we could activate algorithms effects like the unison section, turn on a reverb, and maybe a delay, and we've got a great FM patch to start making music with.
so far, we've just been modulating one sine wave with another sine wave. But we could go one level deeper by modulating our modulator. Let's go back to our most basic example, a sine wave. Add an FM operator above for a sharper sound. And now let's add another FM operator above in exactly the same way, and instantly, our sound becomes even sharper sounding. That's because we have three operators in series now. That means our first operator is the tone we hear, the second operator's waveform is feeding in to shape or modulate that tone, and the topmost operator is feeding into the second operator to actually shape the modulation waveform, which then subsequently modulates the tone we hear. We can visualize the sound we've made so far over in the routing section. Down in slot 1, we see an operator with a red dot to indicate that it's outputting audio. Above that, we see our next operator with a cable connecting these two, as well as our third operator cabled into the second operator. Now, when I say cabled, all you modular synth people listening might have perked up, and yes, I mean cabled. I can click to disconnect an operator's cable routing, and I can reroute it by clicking and dragging to a new destination. Now our operators aren't cabled in series anymore, but rather both operators are feeding into operator slot 1, and both are modulating its tone independently. And that means I can treat how they modulate operator 1 differently. I could change the frequency of the top operator's tone, going up higher and higher for a more razor-sharp sound, and I can adjust the attack, decay, sustain, and release envelope settings so that this sharper element only occurs at the start of the sound, but quickly decays away. Another dramatic impact you can have on your sound using just these basic FM principles is by setting up feedback loops. If I cable the output of operator slot 1 back up to the input of my topmost FM operator, we're now feeding the modulated waveform back up to modulate the second operator, which feeds back down to modulate the waveform, which feeds back up to modulate the operator, and so on and so on. Now, feedback can get dramatic, so you've got a global control for how dramatic it becomes before it just sounds like static. Using just this much knowledge, you can start experimenting with vast combinations of up to all nine operators, some of which route to the audio output, some of which act as modulators, running at various frequencies with different envelopes, and routings that are simple, or spider webs of multi-operator destinations. And that alone would keep you busy for a while and inspire a whole lot of new music. But algorithm is only getting started because in addition to a sine wave FM operator in each slot, we can instead choose one of three other module types. Whether it was through serial operators in a row or feedback loops, we've already seen how we can shape one FM operator's pure sine wave using another FM operator. But we could also run our sine wave operator through a more traditional wave shaper found on many types of synthesizers. And just like before, modifying and shaping our modulator's waveform has a direct consequence on the way it shapes our outputted sound. So operators in series, feedback loops, or wave shapers, whichever of these methods we choose to use, the ultimate goal remains the same. We're trying to generate a more complex waveform than a pure simple sine wave to use as our modulator. And that might cause some of you watching to ask, why don't we just use a more complex waveform as our modulator in the first place? And you're right. We could do exactly that by selecting oscillator and noise. These are wavetable oscillators, which do two uniquely cool things. One is that they instantly generate more complex waveforms without resulting to those previous techniques. The second thing they do, which all wavetable oscillators are known for, is that they allow you to sweep through the wavetable. Our final module type can be useful for sculpting or even taming modulation waveforms. The filter module is exactly what its name suggests, a filter stage that you can pass modulation signals through on their way to other operators. So here we have what is probably becoming a familiar routing, a sine wave operator that is sending to our output, being modulated by a wavetable oscillator.
If we create a filter module and now route our cables so that our signal passes from our wavetable modulator to the filter and then onward, we can now round off some of the wavetable's grit. If we also dial up the filter's envelope amount, we could increase our filter attack so that our filter opens up over time. But of course, a filter doesn't only need to be used as an in-between stage from one module to another. It can be used as the final module in a chain to behave exactly like any filter stage on any other synth. So by now, I've shown you a lot of module types, envelope settings, harmonic frequencies, and other parameters that might influence the sound. But sometimes, introducing some randomized chance into the process is the best way to approach sound design. And that is where the randomizer comes in. With the randomizer, I could just activate every type of parameter and click the button. Algorithm will generate a random number of modules, set some of them to be filters, some of them to FM operators, some to shapers, and so on. Cable them randomly, set their frequencies randomly, etc. Basically, I'll get a random patch, and I could just click away until I like something. But the randomizer has far more finesse than that. For one thing, I can select which parameters I'd like to randomize. Like selecting frequency, to randomize just to the harmonic frequencies in any operator module. To demonstrate, I'll load up Valkyrie Chordmaker. The randomizer button isn't actually a button, it's more like a ribbon controller. If I click on the left side and drag over to the right, you'll see the harmonic frequencies of each operator changing their values as I slide. And you'll hear the sound changing as I go. With each click and slide, I can experiment with different operator frequencies, which changes the character of my sound without departing too far from the pad sound we started with because all of the other envelope properties and everything else is still the same. If we activate the level button, we can now introduce randomized frequency and modulation level for each operator. So you can probably see by now that there's a lot of potential patch magic going on in this relatively small section of the randomizer. I would encourage you to load patches and play around with randomizing various parameters to see what you can come up with. There is so much more to algorithm that we haven't even covered. We've only touched on the effects section. We haven't gotten into shaping our operators with LFOs and curves or programming the mod matrix, key scaling or parameter offsets. The good news is that means I'll be back with plenty more to say about algorithm and to help you get the most out of it. But hopefully by now you can already see how deep it goes. FM synthesis can be one of the more abstract concepts in synthesizer sound design, but that doesn't mean it needs to be an abstract concept in your music making. If you came into this video knowing absolutely nothing about FM synthesis, I hope I've equipped you with the tools you need to dive in, try things out, and make your own sounds and your own music with algorithms.